well. Then we have the Curious George movie. Um, I know they made a few more, but this is the only one I've ever seen. Then we have uh, Letters from a Killer with Patrick Swayze. This was a good movie. I believe this was made for HBO, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but this was a good film. And I know he got really hurt on this movie. He fell off a horse and he got all fucked up. Um, but still a, a good movie, in my opinion. Then we have Chicken Run, great film. Always one of my favorite animated movies. Uh, this was done by the same guys that did Wallace and Gromit. Then we have Jimmy Neutron, Boy Genius. Again, love this movie. I know they did some DVDs of the series, but they didn't. They never released the whole series on DVD. But I did like the series as well. And got a couple uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin movies. First, we have The Condemned, which is okay. It could have been a lot better, but I mean, watching Stone Cold in an action movie is pretty cool. And then we have Knockout. This one was good. It's like Karate Kid, except instead of karate, it's boxing. So not a bad film, in my opinion. And then I have uh, Peter Pan. This is the Platinum Edition. Again, one of my favorite Disney films. And then we have the sequel, Return to Neverland, which I've actually never seen this. Then we have Live Wire with Pierce Brosnan. Good movie. Um, I think this was supposed to go to theaters, and then they ended up releasing it direct-to-video. Um... But a good film, in my opinion. I would like to see this one on Blu-ray one day. Then we have Firestorm with Howie Long. This is not as bad as people say, at least in my opinion. It's not a terrible movie. It's not a great movie, but it's a fun little 90s action film. And then we have Extreme Prejudice, which is definitely my favorite Walter Hill film. Um, this is on Blu-ray overseas. Hopefully one day it'll get a Blu-ray here. And then we have Cocktail with uh, Tom Cruise. Not a bad movie. I like it for what it is. Not a Again, not a terrible film. I mean, nowhere near my favorite Tom Cruise movie. But it has a good soundtrack because it has uh, Kokomo by the Beach Boys. Get that fast and then we'll take it slow. That's where we want to go. Way down to Kokomo. So now, that is the first side. Now we're going to move to the second side. Um, so first up, we have Andre. Uh, HBO used to show this a lot when I was a kid, and I used to watch it very frequently. It's based on a true story about a seal, and this family rescued him, and then he found the family somehow, and then he stayed, and they made him like a like a circus thing and all this. Um, but yeah, again, like I said, uh, HBO used to show this a lot. Uh, the girl, uh, Tina Margarino, she's the girl from uh, Waterworld and Napoleon Dynamite and stuff. This was one of her first movies, but uh, good movie, in my opinion. 
And then we have Summer Catch, one of my favorite baseball films, very underrated movie. Uh, nobody ever talks about it. Definitely going to, uh, since summer is basically here, since it's June, definitely going to watch this soon. And then I have a bunch of Spider-Man DVDs. These are all uh, animated Spider-Man stuff, leftovers. First up, I do have the complete 1967 series, which I actually really like this one. This was pretty cool. Um, this was out of print for a while. I got it for a decent price. Um, I don't know if it's still expensive or not. And then, I mean, you guys have heard me, heard me rant and rave and yell and scream and curse about these DVDs because these are the five random ones that Disney put out of the 90 series when overseas they released it completely. Um, so first up, I'm not going to rant and rave and scream this time because I've done it enough. I'm just going to show them off. Um, but we have The Ultimate Villain Showdown, which I did have this one and the next one on VHS when they first came out back in the day. And then we have Return of the Green Goblin. So very cool. Um, again, you know, why this show continues to be shit on is beyond me. Well, it's on Disney+. Plus. I don't give a fuck about Disney+. Plus. Okay? Disney+, Plus can suck the inside of my fucking asshole. Okay? Just release the shit on DVD. Like, why is it so hard? Then we have Daredevil vs. Spider-Man. Which, this one is kind of random. I think they released it because Daredevil was coming out. Because Daredevil is only in, like, two episodes of the Spider-Man cartoon. And then we have... Uh, Spider-Man vs. Doc Ock. Again, this was released because Spider-Man 2 had come out at the time and Doc Ock was obviously the villain in that movie. And then we have the last one that they did, which was the Venom Saga, which has all the episodes with... Uh, it has the alien costume, and then it has uh, the ones with Carnage in it as well. So very cool. Um, here, actually, in Canada, they did release a bunch more episodes, but I heard the quality's not good. But and then the UK set is really fucking expensive because it went out of print. So yeah, whatever. And then I have the uh, the new Spider-Man animated series. It was as it was called, or as I call it, the MTV series. I really enjoyed this one. I remember watching it when it was on. And it's a shame that it was only one season because, again, I thought that there was a lot of potential here. It was an older Spider-Man. He got to curse a little bit. Um, Neil Patrick Harris did the voice of Spider-Man, which was cool. Um, Ian Ziering did the voice of Harry Osborn. Uh, Lisa Loeb, the singer, was Mary Jane. So, yeah. And then Rob Zombie, I think, was the lizard, if I'm not mistaken. But... Again, I really enjoyed this animated series. I would love to see a Blu-ray of it, maybe one day. So we'll see what happens. But now that, you know, Disney owns every fucking thing in the world, except me, <laughs> I don't know. Next up, Dragon Slayer. Great movie. Um, this is actually a Disney film. Disney did do this, but Paramount ended up releasing it. But this is a great movie. Um, I hope one day we get a Blu-ray of it. This movie was awesome. And then we have The Relic. Very underrated horror film. Uh, really enjoyed this one. And then we have the uncut version of Natural Born Killers. Great movie. Um, it, Tarantino wrote the script, but he did not direct it. But I believe um, Oliver Stone changed a lot of it when he ended up doing the movie but again uh really enjoy this movie then we have aflac you the bomb and phantoms yo <laughs> um not a bad horror film i actually like this one um but of course it's become you know a little bit of a joke because of jay and silent bob and then I have the remake of Salem's Lot with Rob Lowe, which I actually really like this one. I know they're remaking it again. It's like, why? What the fuck? But whatever. 
And then this is a bootleg DVD because this, um, it's on the archive collection, but I bought this at a horror convention years ago, and it is a return to Salem's Lot, which I actually like. This is actually, it's weird. I mean, it's Larry Cohen, so of course it's going to be weird, um, but this was fun. And then next up, I have Rising Sun, good thriller with uh, Wesley Snipes and Sean Connery where they team up with each other. But, yeah, good good movie in my opinion. Uh, another bootleg DVD that I bought at a horror convention because uh, this DVD is still out of print. Um, you can get it decently now, but when I bought this, number one, it was five bucks. And I'd never seen these movies before. Um, but it is a double feature of Watchers and Watchers 2. Great movies. I hope one day these will get Blu-ray releases uh, with some features. We'll see. But again, this is a, a bootleg. It's a DVD-R. Because, again, I bought this like 10 years ago now, almost. About 10 years ago now. So I think that the prices for the actual DVD were still expensive. Because I see them on eBay all the time, and they're not that pricey. So I'll have to upgrade and buy one soon. And then I have Daredevil. Um, I do have the director's cut on Blu-ray, which is the preferred version. But this DVD has a different commentary from the director's cut version. So that's why I held on to it. Unfortunately, it's in full screen. Then we have The Gate. Very fun 80s horror film. Um, the, the artwork really sucks on here. Um, the poster artwork, which they did luckily use for the Blu-ray, is way better. Um, I definitely need to upgrade to the Blu-ray. Um, but very fun 80s horror film. Then I have this uh, six-pack here. Again, why did I... Oh, it's because it's a flip disc. My bad. My bad. Sorry. Uh, this is a Echo Bridge set. Of course, the quality is not going to be the best, but this is the Hellraiser collection, which has Hellraiser 3, Hell on Earth, 4, Bloodline, 5, Inferno, 6, Hellseeker, 7, Debtor, and 8, Hell World. So this is all the other sequels that Doug Bradley was in. That is not 1 and 2. I don't have 1 and 2 on DVD. Um, I actually only have those on VHS still, uh, but I did find this really cheap somewhere. And again... You know, it's a, one of the discs is a flip disc where there's two movies, which is okay. And then you have another disc, which has three movies, which is really pushing it. But, yeah. Um, so that is the Hellraiser Collection. Then we have the Beastmaster. Yes, I love the Beastmaster. This is actually, apparently, Don Coscarelli's most popular film. Um, well, I do know back in the day, HBO and TBS would show it like 16 times a day, um, but still a fun movie. I do have the sequels. They're on DVD-R because they were never released on DVD anywhere in the world. I think it was a rights issue. Uh, next up, we have Surviving the Game, which is a fun movie, hard target type movie that came out right after Hard Target, actually, but... Uh, really good cast. Ice T is the hero, which is nice. And then uh, Gary Busey's in it. Rucker Hauer, uh, Charles Dutton, uh, John McGinley, uh, F. Murray Abraham. So good movie. Then we have Ghost Dog: The Way of the Samurai. Fantastic film. Uh, apparently Criterion is putting this out on Blu-ray. So I'm looking forward to that. But great film. Then I have The Three Musketeers. This is the 90s Disney one. I love this movie. Um, definitely my favorite incarnation of The Three Musketeers. And a solid cast in this film. I mean, you have Kiefer Sutherland, Charlie Sheen, Chris O'Donnell, Oliver Platt, Tim Curry, Rebecca De Mornay, Michael Wincott is one of the bad guys. Um, just, I fucking love this movie, man. It is on Blu-ray, but it's in the Disney Movie Club, so you know how that goes. And then we have Ricochet, which is one of my favorite Denzel Washington films. I hope that this movie gets something better because this DVD 
it's one of those HBO DVDs from back in the day. The quality is not very good on here. Luckily, it's in widescreen, but the quality is not good at all. Um, but this is such a underrated Denzel movie that I never hear people talk about, but really enjoy this movie. Again, hopefully one day it gets a Blu-ray. I love Ricochet. All right, now, my favorite movie of all time, 29th Street. Great movie. It's, uh, you know, the Italian version of It's a Wonderful Life. But again, my favorite movie ever made. I do miss Danny Aiello, who passed away last year. And then another movie that he was in that I really like, Dinner Rush. Very good uh, drama. It all takes place in one, basically one evening, which is nice. Um, but really good movie. Uh, just bought this on Blu-ray before recording this video because I found it for a decent price, but Leviathan, a uh, great 80s monster movie. Um, but yeah, the uh, just ordered it on Blu-ray so I can get ready to get rid of this. Next up, Twilight Zone, the movie. Um, I do still like this movie, but fuck John Landis for what happened um, in his segment, which is fu still fucked up all these years later. Um, but I still like the movie. Um, it is on Blu-ray. I heard, I heard a rumor. I don't, again, it's a rumor, but I heard that it's going to get re-released. I don't know if Warner Brothers is doing it or another company picked it up, but I did hear that the Twilight Zone movie is going to get another release. So we'll see what happens. Then we have Excessive Force. Uh, with Thomas Ian Griffith. Fun 90s action movie, in my opinion. Um, really good casting as well. James Earl Jones is in it. Um, Lance Henriksen's in it. Uh, Tony Todd, Burt Young. So there's a good cast in this one. Then we have uh, Nemesis Game, which has uh, Adrian Paul from Highlander. Um, I haven't seen this movie in so long. I don't really remember anything about it. But also, um, Ian McShane is in it. Okay. And Jay Burchell is in it as well. Okay, all right. So I have to give this one another look. I remember it was like a it was like a mystery thriller type movie. I only ever saw it because Adrian Paul from Highlander is in it. Then we have The Hidden. Great movie. Great alien movie. Um, which, of course, as we all know, uh, Jason uh, Goes to Hell ripped off this movie, but eh, it is what it is. Um, but yeah, I love The Hidden. Hidden 2, not so much, um, but the first one is a classic. Uh, top Secret, very fun. Uh, this is uh, The Naked Gun. It's the same people, but this is like the spy movies instead of the cop movies like Naked Gun. Um, but this just got a Blu-ray overseas, so I definitely want to grab that at some point. Um, but very fun movie. And then we have the specials, which uh, James Gunn actually wrote this. It's about it's a R-rated uh, superhero comedy, and they're all douchebags and stuff. But very fun movie. Uh, Jamie Kennedy is in it. He's the blue dude, or over here. He's the blue the blue guy. He's blue. Ba 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 bye. <laughs> Um, also, Rob Lowe's in it, uh, Thomas Hayden Church, um, Judy Greer. So there's actually quite a quite a number of people in this. Then we have UHF, the Weird Al movie. Love this movie. Uh, it's a classic. You know, hilarious movie. Very very funny. Then we have Medicine Man with Sean Connery. Good movie. I know most people don't like this one, but I like it. Then we have Narc. Great film with uh, Ray Liotta and Jason Patrick as these cops. Um, pretty brutal movie, but really, really enjoyed this one. Then we have, I should put this with Beastmaster because it's Don Coscarelli. Uh, Survival Quest, this is the one he did right before, or right after, I think, Phantasm 2, if I'm not mistaken. But this is a pretty cool movie where... Uh, Lance Hendrickson's this guy that runs like this survival camp and all these people go there for different reasons and they end up having to like come together and fight these bad guys and stuff so 
Cool movie. And then I have uh, the other Kickboxer sequels because I showed uh, Kickboxer 5 in an earlier part, but we have Kickboxer 2, which I did like. I know most people don't like these, but I do. And then we have a double feature of Kickboxer 3, The Art of War, and Kickboxer 4, The Aggressor. Kickboxer 4 is actually my favorite sequel. And then I have Time Cop 2, another sequel that Van Damme was not in, but I actually enjoy this movie. It was a fun uh, directed video sequel. I wish it was longer because it's only like 80 minutes. Um, Would have been nice if it was like 15 minutes longer, but fun sequel in my opinion. And then I got a few uh, Die Hard bonus DVDs. Um, this one is just called the Yippie Kaye bonus disc. This came with one of the box sets. Um, none of the features on here have been re-released. And then I have Die Hard 4.1 Beyond the Action, which this was a Walmart exclusive if you bought the movie there. Again, there's some features on here which did not make it to the Blu-rays. And then I have a few screeners here of episodes of the Director's Chair, which was a series on El Rey where Robert Rodriguez would sit down and talk to different directors. Um, as far as I know, these are the only two that were put out on screener, but I believe all the episodes are here on YouTube to watch. So the first one is Francis Ford Coppola. Um, this one left more to be desired because they just kind of quickly went through all his movies. I wish they would have focus more time on his movies. And then the other one is the Sylvester Stallone episode, which I really enjoyed this one naturally um, because they sat down and talked about, you know, uh, Rambo, Rocky, Expendables, some of the other movies that he's directed, which was nice. So this one was more thorough, but very cool. I found uh, this one when I was out in California. I found it at a thrift store and this one popped up on eBay. So next up we have Scorched, very fun comedy. Um, I know when this movie came out, it was it only came out for like two days in theaters and all this, and it was a big like controversy. Uh, Dickie Roberts, former child star, very fun movie. Uh, really enjoyed this one. David Spade at his best when he's not with Chris Farley. Uh, the best of the Blues Brothers. This is actually. Um, this was like a TV special about the Blues Brothers, and they have some of their performances and stuff, which was cool. And Dan Aykroyd plays both himself and Elwood Blues, and they're like interviewing each other. So it's actually kind of cool how they set it up. Then we have a stand-up DVD, uh, Jim Brewer Hardcore. Uh, you seen this one frequently because Comedy Central did this, and they used to show it a lot. Uh, this is where he does the ACDC Hokey Pokey skit. Um, there's a lot of cool stuff on here. And then I have this uh, Doom bonus DVD. Again, this was a Walmart exclusive. It has uh, some features on here that did not make it onto the uh, other releases. It says there's a thing called Beneath the Exoskeleton, but that is not on here. The only thing that's on here is... Um, there's a behind-the-scenes thing where they talk about the fight between The Rock and Carl Urban. And then there you get to go to dinner with The Rock at this Italian restaurant near where they filmed the movie. But yeah, the exoskeleton thing is actually not on this DVD. But I found that somewhere. And then we have Ocean's Eleven. I like all three of these movies, but I would say this one's my favorite. Then we have The Sandlot Heading Home, which is actually the only good sequel to The Sandlot. Um, and then I have a few John Wayne movies here. First up, we have uh, Rio Bravo, one of the greats of all time. It's uh, John Carpenter got the idea of Assault on Precinct 13 from this movie, and there's actually a commentary with John Carpenter on here. Then we have the Sons of Katie Elder, great one, where Four Brothers was basically a remake of this. Then we have El Dorado, another great one. And then we have none other than True Grit, the original True Grit. All 
All right, and then we have Rocket Man Fun Disney Movie. This is a bootleg DVD uh, Phantasm II, the complete edition. This is a German bootleg, which has uh, the movie. Um, and then it has the work print. What else does it have? Uh, it has the work print. Uh, trailers, TV spots, um, photo gallery, art gallery, um, behind the scenes footage, Angus Scrimm at a Fangoria convention, uh, Phantasmania convention footage, Fangoria convention, another Fangoria convention footage, and I believe the uh, Fangoria commercial, the famous Fangoria commercial that Angus Scrimm did. Again, this is a bootleg. All, pretty much all the features on here are on the various blu-rays of phantasm 2 with the exception of the work print but i found this on ebay for a good price so i was like i'll get it because that was before i got this before phantasm 2 came out on dv uh dvd and blu-ray so that's why i had it or no um i think the universal dvd was out and it didn't have even a trailer that's right so i found this and i was like well that actually has features and stuff I mean, it's a bootleg, but why not? And then the Shout Factory one came out. So, But I still kept it because I love Phantasm 2. Then we have Fright Night 2. This is the legit DVD. This was such a fucking pain in the ass for me to get. Uh, but I did get it. And then we have the original Prom Night. This is the Echo Bridge release because I know there were a lot of different releases out there. Because this one's actually a widescreen. Most of them were not. Then I have the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre. This is the two-disc Ultimate Edition and this very nice steel book. Um, I believe all the features from here are on the Blu-ray, but um, when I get the Blu-ray, I'm still going to keep this because it's a steel book. I like steel books. Um, then I have uh, One Man's Justice with Brian Bosworth, which is one of the better Brian Bosworth movies. And then we have Blackout, which isn't bad. Oh there's, oh, there's the back. My bad. And then Blind Fury with Rucker Hauer. Great movie. So that's it for the bottom on the other side. So, I mean, I've been going for a while... So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do the next two cubes on this shelf. So that way this filming session will just be the first shelf. And then the next filming session I will just move over to the next shelf. Knock those, that one side of DVDs. Knock those out and then move into uh, the Blu-rays on the other side. And then... We will go to the bookshelf that I've had for many, many years, which was a gift from my grandparents. And then um, after that, we will go to the ones that are behind me, which are the ones that I have uh, not watched yet. these out quick yep and then come on behave all right oh, fuck. all right the problem is now solved all right moving on um, next up here I have the remnants of my Kevin Smith DVDs. So first up, I have the Criterion of Chasing Amy because none of the features on here made it to the Blu-ray. Uh, the Blu-ray does have uh, all new features, but again, um, none of the Criterion stuff made it to that Blu-ray. And then I have uh, Dogma because 
Again, um, a ton of the features did not make it to the Blu-ray. There's also the uh, the video commentary on here. That's not on the Blu-ray. I had the Mallrats DVD that had that, but I forgot that it was on there and I got rid of it. But I was able um, online, one of the sites that I get on to download stuff, somebody took uh, the Blu-ray quality of the movie and they synced it up with that video commentary so it's, it's in better quality. But yeah, that's also on here. And then I have Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back because, again, the Blu-ray does not have any of the features. And then the Clerks cartoon. I absolutely love this cartoon. My brother bought this. He just kind of blind bought it, and we've watched this so many times over the years, but it's still very fun. And then I have An Evening with Kevin Smith 2, Evening Harder. I have a couple of the other ones of these back there. Uh, but this is actually the only one I've ever seen. But I really liked it, so that's why I wanted to get the other ones. All right. Now, we've got Trick or Treat. This is the 80s Trick or Treat. Um, Ozzy and Gene Simmons are not in the movie that much. They just put them on the poster or the DVD to make them marketable. Um, I know I said this isn't on Blu-ray. I think overseas it got a Blu-ray, but I'm not sure if it's legit or not. I'll have to look into that. But I really like this movie. It's a very fun 80s horror film. And hopefully one day it'll get a special edition. We'll see. Uh, I think Anchor Bay was supposed to do one, but they couldn't get the rights to all the music. Uh, next up we've got Down Periscope. Very fun comedy. The complete series of Action Man. This is not the second. This is the original Action Man, which I don't think aired in the United States. I really couldn't find any information about it. Um, but Action Man, for those that live in the UK, is the equivalent of G.I. Joe. Um, and then later on, they did like a CGI Action Man for Fox Kids. I do remember that one. Um... We've got Under the Cherry Moon, which is another Prince film that he did later on. Uh, this was after Purple Rain. Um, but yeah, this is not the sequel to Purple Rain. I forget what that one's called. Then I got a couple uh, Don Johnson movies here. Love Don Johnson. First up, we have Dead Bang. A great film, underrated movie that I never hear people talk about. Um, unfortunately, this DVD is in full screen. There is another DVD. It's an archive collection. It is in widescreen, but I'll hold on to this one. And then we have Harley Davidson and the Marlboro Man, another underrated movie. Really like this one. I thought him and Mickey Rourke had good chemistry. I know Mickey Rourke does not like this movie. He said it numerous times, but I thought he did fine in it. And then we have the unrated extended edition of Con Air. Again, they did not add a whole lot, uh, but I still have it just to have it. Then we have Cuffs, very fun movie with Christian Slater. Uh, there is a Blu-ray of this, definitely want to pick it up, but I really enjoy this movie. Very fun, very fun movie. 